guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my bare naked face. So yeah, we're filming a completely different video today. I am in my bathroom, sorry if it's a bit echoey sounding. I'm going to do a makeup tutorial and I say it like that because it's not really a tutorial, it's more just how I apply my makeup without a mirror. Because I am visually impaired, I have never ever applied my makeup using a mirror. And a lot of people have told me that that's a really desirable trait and that's something to be admired. So I've always considered filming a video on my channel about how I apply my makeup without any mirrors. Maybe giving some tips and tricks to other visually impaired people or even if you're sighted giving you some tips and tricks because I understand that you can't always do your makeup in front of a mirror. So just a little disclaimer, I am not Jaclyn Hill or Jeffree Star, I am not a big beauty guru, I do makeup how it works for me and do you know what, most of the time people say my makeup's not bad so I, I think I do okay but I just wanted to put a heads up there. This makeup tutorial will be like very very basic and um, just a kind of everyday look. I won't be doing any eye makeup other than mascara because my eyes are still recovering from my surgery so I don't want to do any eyeshadow but in the future I might do a video on eyeshadow because I do like my eyeshadows. So it is very very basic and also please don't be mean to me this is the first time I'm doing this kind of video and I'm really 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 nervous about doing it so just a heads up. So without further ado I'm just going to get into it before I rabble on. So I'm sitting on the bathroom floor and I have all my makeup out in front of me but the first thing I always do when I do my makeup is I put a band on because I have a fringe. So we don't want any foundation or any un necessary makeup in my hair so I just pin it back like that. So the first thing I'm going to be applying to my face is this Elf Hydrating Primer. I just take one pump, sometimes two depending on how generous I feel and I just rub it in my hands and apply it all over my face like this just like a moisturiser. There's no tricks or anything to this, there's no rhyme or reason, this is pretty easy to apply. Elf is an American product, but you can get it pretty easy in the UK. So the next thing I go on to is foundation. Now I know with a lot of visually impaired people, foundation can be a very dodgy thing to apply. Because for me anyway, even before I lost my sight, I could never see foundation. So I strongly, strongly recommend foundation going into a shop and being colour tested if you can't see it and finding a foundation that works for you and sticking with it. I use this foundation, this is my everyday go-to foundation, it's the Maybelline Satin Dream. Now I know there was a lot of bad reviews on the, I think it was like the Satin Mousse, this is the Liquid Dream or the Liquid liquid dream, I don't know, it's dream something or satin something, I cannot remember and I cannot remember what shade I'm in either, it's like ivory something, I'm really sorry, if I could read it I would. But this foundation works brilliantly for me, so I strongly recommend if you are visually impaired just try and find a foundation that works for you and don't stray away from it. So all I do again is I take a pump. A pump is really good for visually impaired people too because you can control how much you want. So I usually just take one or two pumps and I put it onto the back of my hand. I'm only doing one pump today because I'm keeping it natural. And there we go. And then I've got that little amount on my hand and then I just dot it all over my face like so. This way, um, I'm already achieving a kind of even coverage all over my face because I know some people apply foundation to the back of their brush and then they just smoosh it all on but I think when you're visually impaired this is a really good trick to do because this way at least you know each part of your face is getting a bit of foundation coverage and I just apply it like 
But, oops. Sorry if the camera just moved there, I may have punched it. I'm just taking a baby wipe. Oh, they're all dried up. And I'm just wiping some of the excess foundation off my fingers and the back of my hand. Because foundation gets everywhere and it's disgusting. There we go. So I'm just taking this brush, I'm not a beauty guru, so I'm not going to say it's a Sigma E49. I have no idea what brush this is. I don't, can't even remember where I got it, but it is a reasonably new brush. And what I do to blend my foundation in is I work on sections of my face. So again, if you're visually impaired and you can't see when your foundation is completely blended in, it can be a really daunting thing. So what I do is I focus in sections of my face. So for example, I'll go to my forehead. There's a hair on my face. I'll go to my forehead and I'll just go one, two, three, four, five. And I'm just doing kind of little circular motions on my forehead and I will just count. And I will just work on the top of my forehead for a while. And then when I'm satisfied with how much I blended my forehead, I will move down to my eyebrows and my nose. And I will just count a few times as well. And then I'll move on. And I'll just do different sections of my face. If you work on doing different sections of your face, that way you don't have to worry that you're missing a part out because you know you don't I often used to find when I did foundation I would miss parts out like under my eyes or particularly the tip of my nose and the, the, my side of my temples but if you work on just targeting different sections of your face and blending it in again it's really really key to finding a good foundation because if you find a good foundation that's a really similar match to your skin then you shouldn't need to blend it in for all that long because it should just fit in nicely with your skin tone and this is what this foundation does for me it's nearly an exact replica to my skin tone so I find that this foundation's a really safe foundation for me to use. So if nobody's in the house and they can't tell me if there's any lines in my foundation, I'll always reach for this one, as opposed to you know my, my other foundations, because I know with this one, as long as I give it a good blend, um, it doesn't give me any problems. So I just do this until I'm satisfied. It really is a guessing game, like I said, because I can't see if I have lines in my face. Or everything's blended in so I just do this until I'm, I'm satisfied that's why having a foundation you know that works for you and blends well to your face is really really important make sure to do it under your chin as well and at the sides because these are usually the places that you'll have your sneaky lines Now this next step I don't do every time and it's concealer. I just have a concealer stick here. One side is concealer and the other side is under eye highlight. I can't see which is which but in this case it doesn't matter. And it's by e.l.f. again. I don't do this stage every time. I only put concealer under my eyes when I feel particularly tired and I'm not meaning to come across braggy or anything but I've never had under eye bags or puffy bags or red bags under my eyes so I don't really use concealer as well. I don't use concealer for any blemishes or red parts in my face because I've never really had a problem with that. So if I was doing my makeup right now and I wasn't filming, I would skip this step because I'm not tired so I feel that I don't need it. But for the purpose of this video, I will show you. So, just taking this out. And all I'm doing with this tip is I'm just going to my under eye and I'm just dabbing away. Try and make a little kind of V under your eye as best you can and then dab in the middle of the V and then you... You just do the same onto the other eye, just try and make a kind of V shape under your eye and dab in. So to start off with, I 
use my fingers and all I do is I just take my fingers under my eyes and I just pat, 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 pat under my eyes and this is the same kind of thing for foundation as it is for the concealer. You, you can't see when the concealer is blended in so just making sure to take your time and blending is key and over blending you can't over blend so just tap 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 I think I have a beauty blender and I will show you how to do it with the beauty blender but whether you're visually impaired or not I think fingers are better because they are warmer and you can feel more precisely and I just think fingers are great and unappreciated tools when it comes to makeup. You know, if you're a makeup artist, you can't stick your manky fingers in someone's face because that's unhygienic, but I'm not a makeup artist and I'm doing my own makeup. Make sure to get right into the corners up here because um, it's always the corners for me that seem to never get blended. I feel that my concealer is all blended in now. Voila! Again, I'm just taking my wipe to get all the concealer off my fingers. The next step is setting powder. Over here. So this is the setting powder I use. It's just the Stay Matte Remote London. Most people that I've seen on YouTube use 001 translucent or I think it's translucent it's called. I don't use that one because it's boring and I don't want a translucent powder. So the one I use is 003, I think it's called Peach Cobbler and as you can see it's a peach colour and it's got little flecks of glitter in it. If you like little flecks of glitter and that's your thing then so be it but I know that a lot of people out there do not like having glitter in their setting powder. Me, I'm a unicorn and I want every single part of my makeup and my face to sparkle. Oh, oh my goodness, this is, this is what I hate about setting powder. It's so messy and it goes everywhere. Be warned. So setting powder is pretty easy. You just take a swirl of it on your brush and you just weak it, that's a Scottish word, all over your face like so. There is a hair on this brush and it is disgustingly annoying. There we go. You just apply it all over your face and this just keeps the foundation locked in place. There is no tips or tricks to this. You can get as much setting powder all over your face as you like. It's not a big deal. Um, I never look powdery and I've never been told I look powdery so I know that's not a problem. And just make sure to take a little bit extra for under your eyes and when you're applying it to under your eyes, go backwards and forwards and dab. That way the setting powder won't get a chance to go into the concealer and make it crease. If you just applied it like you would all the others, then it would it would crease. And voila! So that is the base of my makeup done. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how I apply bronzer and how I kind of contour. Now I'm not saying I do contour, but it's kind of like my version of contour. Again, if I was applying makeup just for myself right now, I would skip this step because I'm, I'm kind of really not into bronzer just now. But for the purpose of this video, I will show you how I apply it. So I am using my Benefit Huller Bronzer. Again, I think it's really important with bronzers as well, if you're visually impaired, to find one that works for you. I recommend just listening to other people and seeing what they like. Benefit Hula Bronzer is a great one to go for because it is the UK's number one bronzer. So when they have a claim like that, you know you can't go wrong with them. So all I do is take a swirl of it. And I feel my temples inside of my face and I just do little circular motions up and down the temples of my face, like so. And then I bring it down 
just to the very top bit here of my cheekbone but not all the way down and I just kind of flick so it's kind of like a little L shape just a flick and that's just to apply it onto my face to begin with and I do the same at the other side this is just to um, roughly apply it to the area you want it to begin with. If it looks rough right now, don't worry, because that's when we blend, blend, blend. And again, you just flick, because you don't want... I'm probably putting my bronzer up too far, but like I said at the start, I'm not a beauty guru, and this works for me. Um, and it looks okay, I've been told. Nobody's ever told me it doesn't look okay. So, yeah. There's a little brush that comes with the Hula Bronzer. It's just this kind of brush. And all I do, with no product on it, or whatever product's on it, I just, again, kind of swish it. And this way, I'm just gently blending it, so I'm not applying any more product, I'm just blending it out and this way it covers more of the side of my temple and we're just aiming for that little swishy bit there and I just do this, not for too long and I do the other side as well, not for too long because bronzer's not like a concealer or foundation, it shouldn't be blended for a lot of time, it's just powder the next thing I'm going on to is blush. Now I own cream blushes and powder blushes but I thought for this video since I was going on earlier about how powerful fingers are I would use a cream blush. I think cream blushes are good for people that are visually impaired as well because again you can use your fingers so you can be more precise with the placement. So this is just an e.l.f. cream blush. I have no idea what it's called. But I just take a few swirls of it on my finger and I apply it right to the tops of my cheekbones, just where you can feel that bone. And again, I just pat, 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 pat. And I'll apply a little bit more and I'll pat, 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 pat. And you don't want to go too overboard with the blush because you don't want to look like some sort of Russian doll. And then you just do the other side. And you just go pat, 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 pat. And pat, pat. You don't really need to blend cream blush either because it's already cream. So when you're patting it on to your cheekbones, you're kind of already in a way blending it out. And I'll just quickly go over it one more time just to make sure it's all sitting pretty. And there we go. So the next step is my all time favourite step and it is highlighter. And I'm using one of my Jeffree Star highlighters. I think this one is Peach Goddess, I'm almost sure. I can show you the colour of it, if I can open it up. See, here we go. I have a whole video on my Jeffree Star highlights, so if you want to know more about these, then that's on my channel. But there's a colour of it, so if it's a bronzy kind of colour, it's King Tut. If it's a peachy kind of colour, it's Peach Goddess. But I have no idea because I can't see it, but it doesn't really matter. I am taking this fluffy blush brush, which is really hard to see. It's a Ted Baker one, I think, and I'm just swirly applying it. And I will first apply it to my cheekbones. Now I just start at the corner of my eye here and I work my way down. So first of all, again, I just do a pat 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 motion just to apply it first to my cheekbones and I will do the other side. Again, I'll just do a pat 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 motion and then once I've done the pat 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 motion, I will apply some more because the more highlight the better in my opinion and that's when I will do the swish motion and I will do another swish motion and just because I can't see and this brush is so thick it's really good because it's so fluffy and thick but you can't really feel your cheekbones through the, blur the brush sorry so I apply I just take a little bit on my fingers 
and I just stroke it down. This way I know I'm applying it exactly where I want it to sit and I just stroke it up and down like so. And I can also feel the highlight there before. Um, so I'm applying oodles and oodles of highlight but like I said in my Jeffree Star review video, in my opinion you can um, go wrong with highlight, you can apply as much as you like and I like to be glowing like a unicorn so the more highlight the better. I'll just apply a bit more and I will take it down in between my eyebrows and down the bridge of my nose and then the tip of my nose. Now I think the nose is an important place because I used to never blend my nose and it would just look like a big white line down my nose which is not a cute look. So I just like to go over it a few times, especially the tip, you don't want to look like Rudolph the Peach Nose Reindeer. And then you go to the Cupid's bow and you just go beep 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 and you just dab at it. And you go to the chin and you just dab at that too. I always do the chin and the Cupid's bow last because I think it would look really really silly if you had a buttload of highlighter on your chin and your cupid's bow so I always do the cheekbones first because I think the cheekbones you can have as much as you like and then whatever's left in your brush you can apply to the other areas but let's face it I always go in and add a wee bit more because I'm highlight crazy. The last step I'm doing is mascara. Now mascara can be very very daunting for people, visually impaired people because it is the eyes. Now I will say off the bat, I can do all of my makeup myself except applying bold and dark lip colours. I haven't found a way around that yet, I need help with that. And eyeliner. Other than that, I can do everything else myself. And like I said at the start, for this tutorial I'm only going to be applying mascara because my eyes just aren't ready for eyeliner or eyeshadow. So this mascara is, it's just a little sample one I got that I've been using and I really do need to pick up an actual proper full size mascara. I think this is a Benefit Their Real Mascara and all you do, I do recommend if you're going to get a mascara, don't get sample ones if you're visually impaired because I think the wand for visually impaired people should be longer. I think that's really important. You just Place it as close to your eye as you think until you can feel the bristles on your eyelash. Do not move the brush. You just, you move your eye and you blink your eye into the brush. This is really hard to talk and do at the same time. <laughs> you just blink your eye into the brush. I am moving my hand in the brush because it's just what I do. Um, only do that if you're really, really confident and you think you can do it, I'm just tilting the brush at angles to get to the sides of my eyelashes. But only do this if you're really, really confident. I think I just got mascara on my eyelid. Well done. And the bottom lashes as well, only do these if you're really, really confident. Just kind of wiggle at them. If you wiggle at them from side to side, that puffs them up and it makes them larger. The last step I'm going to do is applying a lip colour. Now I do like my bold and bright lip colours but the whole point of this video is to show you what I can do without a mirror and what you can do without a mirror because if I can do it, you can do it. I was going to apply a clear nude lip gloss but my lip glosses are behind you and there's not a lot of room in here and the odds of me kicking the camera are very very high and I don't want it to go out of focus or out of place. So I'm just going to apply this lipstick right here. This is a Clinique lipstick. I have had this for ages. I think this is in the colour Pink Bamboo. It's just a kind of nudey, pinky, browny colour. And I just apply it on. your makeup supplied you just take a setting spray this is one from elf and you just go squish oh it would help if it was facing me squish 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 and just fire your face and you let it dry 
and that setting spray just makes sure everything's locked in place, nothing's moving and it's going to stay there for the full day, whether you're going to the gym, going to work, working night shift, whatever, it will stay there and I think I've ran out of this pretty much. And that is how I do my everyday basic makeup. So it's nothing to write home about, it's nothing exceptional, but if you're ever, even if you're not visually impaired, if you're ever out and about and you don't have a makeup in hand, at least you know you can do something basic like this without a makeup, without a makeup, without a mirror, sorry, or if you are visually impaired, you can apply makeup just as nicely. I can do more out there looks for you using eyeshadow, I just don't want to apply eyeshadow to my eyes as of yet. So I, I hope this video was interesting for you and I hope you learned something and again, please go easy on me if I'm sitting here and I have big black marks of mascara on my eyelids, just think of it as a Halloween look. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'll talk to you guys later and I hope you're having an awesome day.